Hi guys. In front of me, I have our camera trap flashes. And these flashes have been designed from the ground up to be ideally suited to camera trap photography. But what does that mean? Well, first of all, we've made them as strong, robust, and reliable as possible, with features such as a strong metal hot shoe that's not gonna snap if the flash is knocked, and a solid build construction. We've also tried to make them as easy to use as possible. So they'll work much the same way as any other speed light flash that you might have used in the past. The flashes can be powered with regular AA batteries. So right now I'm gonna insert some rechargeable batteries. This is our zoom flash, the Z1, and it has an adjustable zooming head. So this zoom range goes from 24 millimeters to 105 millimeters. This zoom gives you greater creative possibilities and freedom. We also have a more basic model, the F1 flash, which has a fixed zoom head, equivalent to about 35 millimeters, and a simplified user interface and this flash boasts excellent power efficiency. Now, an important feature of these flashes is that they are compatible with all the main camera systems that you're likely to want to use. And the reason for that is that they do not require any special signal in order to wake up. They are always on and always ready to fire, and they just need a simple shoot signal via the hot shoe or via a PC sync terminal into this socket on the side. Now there's two very easy ways that you can integrate these flashes into your camera trap setup, either wired or using wireless triggers. So let me show you those two solutions now. So first I'll show you wired. And for that we start with this simple hot shoe adapter, which should fit into the hot shoe on any camera system out there. And what it does is it takes the shoot signal from the central pin in the hot shoe, um, and that triggers the flash in sync with the shutter. Next, I'm gonna connect the camera to the flash using one of our cables. One end of the cable plugs into the hot shoe adapter on the side here, and the other plugs into the socket on the side of the flash. Now, when the camera triggers, the flash will go off. If you want to use more than one flash, we have various splitter cables. And so this is a one to five way splitter. And so this just plugs into the hot shoe adapter instead of the cable. And then the cable plugs into there. And then here I've got another flash cable. This is a longer one, which I'll then plug into another end and into a different flash. And so now the camera will trigger both flashes together. We have flash cables in a variety of different lengths. And we also have extension leads. So you can place the flash as far away as you need from the camera. The advantage of using wire to connect your flashes to your camera is that you don't have to worry about powering wireless receivers. However, if you wanna have quite a few flashes or you want your flashes quite far from the camera, you can end up needing quite a lot of wire, and it can also be hard to keep the wire out of your photograph. Wires can also be quite vulnerable to being chewed by animals or pulled out of the flashes. So it's nice to have this as an option, but you might wanna consider the alternative, which is to use wireless triggers instead. So let me show you how that would work. So for the camera, you need to use a transmitter, and these are compatible with Canon or Nikon cameras and they just slide into the camera's hot shoe. And then you mount every flash onto a receiver. You start by setting the wireless triggers to one of a number of different channels so that they don't interfere with any other setups you have in the area and you make sure the receiver channel matches the transmitter channel. 
you can use one transmitter to trigger an unlimited number of receivers. So for setups where you've got a lot of flashes or where you've got flashes quite far from the camera, this is generally a more practical approach. You can also mix and match. So you could have some flashes close to the camera triggered using wires and then further away flashes triggered with wireless receivers. Or you could have one wireless receiver trigger multiple flashes with a cable between them. So lots of options there for you to consider. The success of a camera trap project often comes down to just leaving the cameras running for long enough. But it's not always possible to visit a camera trap setup regularly just to change batteries. So we designed this flash system to give you as much battery life as you need. This is possible thanks to a power input socket on the side of each flash. Through this socket, you can power the flash with much larger batteries to give yourself weeks or even months of standby time. Or you can use a solar panel to keep the batteries inside the flash topped up indefinitely. So let me show you how these setups look. When using an external battery, we can take the batteries out from inside the flash. We then use a flash power cable like this to connect the battery to the flash. So this end plugs into the Camtraptions flash. This doesn't work with any other brand of flash. And then the battery just plugs in to the other side of the cable. There's a spare output on the cable which you can use to power the receiver from this battery as well using our wireless trigger adapter. That just plugs into this cable and then into the side of the wireless receiver. You can also use a solar panel to keep this big external battery topped up. To do that, you need a splitter cable like this, which goes between the wireless receiver cable and the flash cable. And then you plug the solar panel into this cable. And so now the solar panel will top this up whenever there's sunlight and then when it's dark the system will run off the charge stored in this battery. On those occasions where you don't get much sunlight for a few days this large battery will give you plenty of buffer. In situations where sunlight is a bit more reliable you might not actually need the buffer provided by such a large battery. Instead you can use the solar panel to keep the batteries inside the flash topped up. So let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to start by putting the rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries back in. These are just standard rechargeable AA batteries. And they don't have any batteries in the wireless receiver. Next, we're going to use this solar adapter, which has three ends. One that plugs into the power socket on the side of the flash. Another that plugs into the wireless receiver here. The wireless receiver is now being powered by the batteries inside the flash. The solar panel now just plugs in to the end of this cable. So every time this panel gets a bit of direct sunlight, it will top up those rechargeable batteries inside the flash. And as long as you get a bit of sunlight every day or every other day, that should be enough to keep the flash and the receiver running indefinitely. So there you have it, a camera trap flash system that's very flexible, reliable, easy to set up, and that can run indefinitely using solar power. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or send us a message. And good luck in your camera trapping projects. I'm Will Borod Lucas, thanks for watching. Bye for now.